Is there anything outside samsara? If everything has a cause, does samsara have it too? How does one first come into samsara? So we have three questions here. We'll, we'll answer them individually. Is there anything outside samsara? Samsara is a name for what we for the conditioned universe. It um, encompasses everything that arises and therefore everything that ceases. It encompasses everything that is impermanent, unsatisfying, uncontrollable. Um, in its briefest uh, description, it is the five aggregates, or, or even briefer, I suppose, is just body and mind, physical and mental aspects of experience. And so the word samsara, if I'm not mistaken, means wandering on, wandering. Sarati, what would Sarati, Sangsara. Anyway, as I understand, I, I can't remember the derivation, but it means wandering. So it's a, a circle, going around in circle, born, getting old, sick, and dying. Um, without any, uh, the wandering aspect, this means without any uh, goal or any resolution, without getting anywhere, without, without actually accomplishing anything without any destination, most beings without any real goal, um, without any purpose, and so on. But um, that which it, it is comprised of are the five aggregates, or simply put, body and mind, physical and mental aspects of experience. So, is there anything outside of that? Yes. There are two things, I think you could say there are two things that are outside of that. One things that don't exist. Uh, concepts. Concepts are not a part of samsara. I don't think you could call them a part of samsara because they're not real. They don't exist. Um, a concept, uh, the chair, you know, doesn't exist. Monk. Monk is not something that exists. It's, it's the object or it's the uh, substance of a thought of, of a thought, of a recognition that arises. It's just a word. Um, the actual chair, the actual monk doesn't exist in reality. So I, could, I say that, that would be one thing you could argue doesn't, isn't a part of samsara. But it may be, uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, more importantly, the one thing that they say that is outside of sam samsara because it's un unconditioned, because it's satisfying, controllable, no, sorry, because sorry, 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 because it's uh, permanent and satisfying. It's still uncontrollable, but it's permanent and satisfying. Uh, so I made a mistake there in the beginning. I said samsara encompasses everything that is uncontrollable. It doesn't. There's one extra thing that is uncontrollable outside of samsara. Sabe uh, dhamma anatta. All dhammas, including nibbana or nirvana, are non-self, are uncontrollable. Uh, so, the one thing that is really and truly outside of samsara is nibbana or nirvana, because it's unconditioned. It doesn't arise. It doesn't cease. It isn't born. It doesn't die. It's uh, permanent and satisfying. And so, that's the one thing outside of samsara. If everything has a cause, so okay, not everything has a cause because nibbana doesn't have a cause. And, yeah, because Nibbana doesn't have a cause. Does samsara have a cause? <clears throat> okay, so here's where we have to say that actually samsara doesn't exist. It's a concept. It's the name of that we have for the process. But the process is actually made up of building blocks, and those building blocks actually exist. Those are the things that have causes. Um, so I think you could say concepts, technically speaking, don't have a cause because by the word cause you mean something that causes it to arise and concepts do not arise. A concept is something that doesn't exist. Uh, it's it's a uh, illusion. No. Or you could say it exists but not in ultimate reality. So it has a cause in a conventional sense but in reality is uncaused. I would think. I mean these are all technical words and I'm probably saying probably the technical answer is a bit different 
but there is a distinction to be made. So, um, you, 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 when you conflate these and you don't make this distinction, you, you start to say, well, everything has a cause. Does samsara have, have as well? And, and you're talking about two different things. In Buddhism, those things that have a cause are the five aggregates, the, the, the physical and mental aspects of experience. They are causally uh, formed. And so that's what we focus on. Now, samsara is just a name for all of that. Um, so the third question, how does one first come into samsara? The implication is that it has a cause, there was something before it, um, which is one of those questions not answered in Buddhism. And you can, you can disregard it simply because it's meaningless, purposeless, it's in the past. Um, but it seems also to be potentially unanswerable or improper as a question because it relies on the idea that um, time is linear, the idea that the past actually somehow exists, or the idea that things are 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 that the past is the cause of everything, and so on. In Buddhism, we don't start with the past; we start with the present, and the present is creating the past, and 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 bringing about the future. But we 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 take the present as our base, kind of like a. Uh, ripples in a pool of water everything the past and the future expand out from the present moment which uh, actually may be supported somehow by things like quantum physics which seems to suggest that the future can actually affect the past or or seems to not not suggest but but the, has the potential to to show one of the answers is to show that the future can actually affect the past which is really strange but would explain the ability to predict the future, see the future, and that kind of thing. Anyway, um, one of the questions that the Buddha declined to answer is the idea of uh, something, uh, uh, how, one, how one came into to what was before samsara or so on. 